made Rodriguez, her mother's only daughter, dreamed of becoming as a marine biologist. <coughs> Tess Marie Mata played the same position on her softball team, second base, as a favorite Houston Astros player. Leila Salazar sang Sweet Child of Mine by Guns N' Roses with her father on their morning drives to school. Xavier Lopez made the honor roll on Tuesday, which would turn out to be the last day of his life. The 19 children killed that day at Rock Elementary School in Uberdy, Texas, were both typical and extraordinary. To read their life stories is devastating. This is cited from the New York Times, titled, Today, We Mourn for the Victims of Newberry on May 27, 2022. We have all heard the news and see the headlines about the horrific mass shooting at Rock Elementary School in Texas. We may have oscillated between grief and answer, deep sadness and equally deep frustration. 22 lives were tragically short. 19 children, two teachers, and a shooter. But you know what? We've gotten used to what will happen after this kind of horrible events occurs. Maybe for the time being, there will be some disturbance nationwide. People's hearts cry out, how could this happen? And in the same time, we think and ask, how can this still happen? <coughs> but looking back on the past years, we have been here before. We have been here so many times. In today's scripture reading, as Paul and Silas preach in Philippi, they encounter a slave girl who had the spirit by which she predicted the future. She is a Pythoness who is inspired to speak oracles by Apollo. She reveals that the apostles are servants of the Most High God. Over a number of days, she followed the missionaries and tells all the people that these men know the secret way of salvation. Enough is enough. So Paul miraculously removed her powers of divination. She was inspired by a power, the Pythian. Baby, not by God. So Paul released her from the spirit of a python in the name of Jesus Christ. Then this caused trouble. The owners of the slave girl just lost their asset, which made which had made a fortune for them. They were upset. 
So they had Paul and Silas and their missionary team arrested. They were stripped as a way of publicly humiliating them. They were beaten by rats. After they have given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. But you know what? Why did the owners of the slave girl have Paul and Silas arrested and thrown into prison? Just because they lost a business that had been lucrative. The very similar thing still has been occurring in this country. Each time massacres are taken place by gun shootings. It looks like people have been only concerned about their business will be diminished. It just looks like so long as our love of guns is greater than our love for our children. So long as our love of money is greater than our love for our children, this will continue to happen. Can you fix everything? No. But what can we do? This Sunday is Ascension Sunday. Before Jesus was ascended to heaven, he commanded the disciples, go into all the world and love God and love your neighbors. I think you remember the mission statement of the United Methodist Church, making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. In prison, Paul and Silas are singing hymns when all of a sudden the prison is shaken by the earthquake. The prison doors are thrown open and Paul and Silas find themselves freed from the star. The jailer, fearing the consequences, is about to kill himself. And then Paul shouts out from the darkness. We are all here. Put away your sword. Then the jailer brings light into their darkness and nails before them. He treated harshly earlier in the day and says, I want what you have that caused you to act like you did here. By remaining rather than running, the jailer is opened to the gospel. And so he invites Paul and Silas and the missionary team back to his home. And on hearing the gospel, he and his family came to put their faith in Jesus. It was so strange, kind of abnormal, disturbing the normality. They were disturbing the city. 
It was the power of transforming the world. When Paul and Silas and their team were arrested, they didn't blame anyone. They just sang hymns and prayed together. Likewise, we need different approaches so that we make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. People in every country struggle with mental illness. And but these massacres of gun violence occur almost exclusively here in the United States. This is not a mental issue. This is a gun issue. So, what do we do? We should start with ourselves. Not simply pointing fingers at all the problems out there. There's Mandela said, it always seems impossible until it is done. And Jesus said, Truly I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Change is hard. That's the point. And it will be resisted. But we embrace the mission statement then we are change makers. We are change dreamers. And we will be resisted and ignored and maybe even prosecuted. Changing our rules around guns in this country may seem like an insurmountable mountain. And yet, nothing is impossible if we have faith and belief and work together to make it happen. So what do we do? We pray and get busy. Let's disturb the city. Let's disturb the nation. Let's disturb the world. Like Paul and Silas and their missionary team did in the prison. Thanks be to God.